What's up everybody? Today is leg day, so the third day in my training split is quad focused leg day. The theme for today's workout video is recovery. So this is an area that I have always struggled with because like I mentioned before, I really enjoy training. I really like the feeling of being in the gym and lifting weights and I can do it every day. It's something I enjoy doing even when I probably shouldn't be training because I need to recover. So. My biggest focus in the past year and a half to two years has been improving my recovery. And I can tell you that my results have skyrocketed since I've paid more attention to allowing my body to recover. So this particular training split has two days of recovery and I've never consistently given myself that much recovery time consistently. Some days, some weeks, I would take one to two days. But most weeks, I would work out at least once a day every single day of the week. And I say at least because sometimes it's more. Now, You'll see a lot of great workout advice and um, workout training advice, nutrition advice on social media, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or even Facebook, but we you have to look at the source. And when I say consider the source, look at not just what they look like, but their actual lifestyle. So the reason I say this is because we have these influencers or fitness models and you have to realize that if they're doing this for a living and full time, then their day to day is going to be completely different from the average person. And I'm telling you this because I I still work full time. I uh, I have to go to work every single day. Uh, usually, uh, I have a client at five or six a.m. and I typically work most of the morning. I'll get a little bit of a break to train, and then I go back to work until at least nine at night. And then I'm typically editing videos after that. So. I'm uh, not trying to brag about the amount of work that I get done in a day by any stretch of the imagination. I do have off days as well. But what I'm trying to get through is when you have other stressors in your life, when you have a full-time career, you're gonna have to realize that your training split and your recovery needs are gonna be completely different than someone who is only focused and has the ability to only train and obviously everybody can't be a fitness model everybody can't uh, be a full-time bodybuilder or or anything like that you know so we have to uh, be able to train consistently and stay in shape with our day-to-day -day routine and so I think I'm a really good I think I'm in a really good spot to help a lot of people out because I have worked some of the most demanding careers when I was in my early 20s I was doing oil field work which we worked seven days a week sometimes 13 14 hour days and if you can make time to stay in shape and make time for everything else you need to do while you're doing a career like that, then you can stay in shape doing anything. Now, uh, bear in mind that was a physical career, so that did help as well, but I was still training with weights at least three days a week, and when I didn't have time to do that, I would do running or calisthenics. And then I've done the corporate thing, I've gone to school, I worked full time through school. So I get it guys when you have something going on. I have a lot of clients as well that have very stressful jobs, very 
demanding careers and not just demanding on time but demanding mentally as well and the important factor I think the most important factor you have to consider when it comes down to stress is going to be the recovery and the cortisol response so it comes back to our our recovery needs so even if you're taking off day even if you're taking two or three off days a week if you're boosting your cortisol so much throughout your day you're not going to recover properly that's going to affect your recovery so we have to be able to limit that stress so when you're recovering and even on your training days we want to limit cortisol so limiting cortisol can be tricky and it's going to take time and a lot of uh, self-awareness and effort from you so you can control your stress levels with simple breathing techniques and just like I said self-awareness because you first have to be aware that you're stressed out and a lot of times it'll happen it happens to the best of us it happens to me all the time you know I'll be uh, thinking about everything that I have to get done and everything that I'm doing and I'm realizing that I'm not being in the moment and I am just allowing stress to accumulate and build up so when you catch yourself in that situation just stop try to try to stop thinking about anything clear your mind and just breathe as deeply as possible get outside if you're able to if not just stand up and get moving if you're sitting at a desk just stand up take a couple deep breaths big deep breaths and eliminate that nip it right in the bud okay because if you're stressed you're not going to recover and you're not going to see the results that you want it not only will affect your recovery it's also going to help put more body fat on you and that isn't something that any of us want right we don't want more body fat unless you're maybe uh, trying to go uh, pro in sumo wrestling maybe so uh, that being said I'm gonna get on with this leg workout I took my pre-workout already so I am ready to go excited to hit quads so let's get this thing going so the first exercise is gonna be our priming or activation exercise and a little trick I learned on these is alternating your toe position. So on the first set, I'm gonna have my toes pointed or extended away from me. On the second set, I will have my toes flexed or pulled up towards the knees. Now what that does is going to help you activate different fibers in the quads. So to activate as much fiber as possible, we can alternate little things like position to ensure we're activating as much muscle as possible. Now this isn't one you want to go super heavy on. We'll stay in the moderate range and just try to focus on the time under tension. So the first of our compound exercise is going to be a Smith machine squat, which is uh, basically a variation of a back squat. And I've typically only used the barbell back squat. I haven't really used Smith machines in my programming in the past a lot, but it is a great variation to give yourself a little bit more focus on the quads because you can change the foot position, bring your feet back a little bit more and just effectively overload those quads. So key position is everything in these. Now the rest period is going to be really relative to how hard you push yourself during the set. So you want to make sure you're fully recovered. So when it comes to resting, I like to utilize my rest period to actually foam roll or stretch as needed. And in this case, you'll notice I wasn't going super low and that's because I was having a little bit of IT band pain in the front of my hip. going to necessarily cure the issue. What it can do is the adhesions. So it's just a permanent tissue. I like this roller. It's a smaller roller and it's a combination roller wall ball. So you can find this on my Amazon store for about $60. So it's a stainless steel water bottle and a foam roller. So it's really, really convenient. So I definitely utilize this every single workout. Um, and again, in between sets is a good time to focus on rolling and mobility. So even though you are resting, you are recovering, 
you're also focusing yeah. on something else to where you're going to be able to maximize your time in the gym instead of just sitting there, which is an ideal anyway. And as far as hip pain or lower back pain, you know, sitting, we're sitting all day already, so that's, it may feel good at the moment, but it's not going to help with your pain, so I want to minimize the amount of sitting that we do. And so, as I build up on these squats, again, the focus is intensity, so by the end set, trying to get to a weight that you can't complete one more rep. So if you're doing 15 reps, you should be going heavy enough that you can't do 16 on your last working set. That's the other big advantage of using the Smith machine. It enables you to go to failure without having to worry about racking the weight. You can just put it up at any time. Another important aspect when it comes to repair and recovery is hydration. So making sure you're getting enough water in and making sure you take water with you. So drinking water in between sets is ideal. So bring a water bottle. I like this Mobot bottle that I was mentioning earlier. Again, it's a combination foam roller and bottle. So one less thing that you have to remember going to the gym. So it makes it really convenient for you. So our second compound movement is the leg press. So to focus on your quads, try to keep your feet low and close together. So low on the platform and as close together as possible. Another thing you want to do is make sure that you don't bounce the weight. So don't bounce that weight. Keep it under control. Try not to rest at the top. So don't pause at the top of your movement there. Try to only pause if you're going to pause at the bottom of the rep where you have tension on the muscle. Another thing you want to avoid is just going way too heavy. Now, you should go as heavy as you're able to with good control and form. So you want to make sure that you're able to maintain muscle tension and not bounce the weight or have to resort to bad form or do partial reps. You can work in partial reps, but primarily you should be focused on the full range of motion. So try not to make it an ego thing and worry about how much weight you're lifting. Don't think you're gonna get stronger in every workout. Leg press is a great tool if you focus on the muscle tension more than the weight. So you can really overload the weight as you get stronger. You can get stronger pretty quickly in leg presses. But there's no rush and every day isn't gonna be a day where you're going to leg press a thousand pounds so just keep that in mind focus on the end result not the amount of weight you're lifting the bulgarian split squat or rear elevated split squat is a great quad exercise and it can also target your hands and glutes as well depending on how you're set up your feet i like a little bit of a closer stance for quad focus and you can see i'm not using any weight here so the first set i always try to do body weight and just make sure that I'm nice and loose before I start to add any weight. They can be a little bit challenging on balance, so you may want to hold on to something and just hold a weight in one hand. If you don't have great balance yet, you can also perform them on a Smith machine, which I've done in the past, and that kind of uh, eliminates your need to balance since the bar will help you balance. So you can either hold on to a bench or a nearby rack, or again, you can try this variation, which I like because it, it's going to challenge my balance as well on that front leg. Now the front leg is the primary focus here, but you should feel your back leg working a little bit as well, getting a good stretch. Walking lunge is a great exercise to really burn out the quads. So to really focus on your quads, try to drop the knee right behind the heel as close to the ground as you can and try not to rest in between reps here. So just three sets to failure. Use as much weight as you're able to. You can do body weight if you need to, which I'm doing here. You can use a light set of dumbbells, a set of 25 pound plates, or even a barbell if you want to go a little heavier. But just make sure you're able to maintain good form and try to get to failure on every set.
have to attack what you want to attract or you're gonna look back and regret what you lack uh, everybody knows that's a fact yeah i just want my words to impact yeah i just want my words to all last yeah not sorry if i put you on blast uh. they know just what they see on the outside they don't know just what i'm like on the inside if you knew what i could do you'd watch your backside if you knew what i could do you'd stay in at night i'm the type of dude you don't want to fuck with so the final exercise is a seated calf raise, just three sets to failure. On any calf work, I tend to feel it most when I focus on slow repetitions and really focus on the negative. So I'm going for about a three second count for each rep here, just nice and slow and try and make sure I get a good stretch at the bottom. It's pretty painful, especially after quads, so it won't take you a lot to get to failure here, especially if you're focusing on that slow time under tension. And like I was saying earlier, you gotta find the program that's right for you. And we all want to have the most optimal conditions, but sometimes that's just not reality. So if your weight, for everything to fall into place, you're probably gonna be waiting a long time and it may never happen for you. So you gotta make best with the situation that you're in and try to build a little bit more each day to make your situation more ideal, more ideally suited for your goals. So just remember, following programs that influencers or athletes follow may be great, but they may not be right for you. And nothing against those athletes or influencers or even professional trainers. But remember, there is no one size fits all. Every single human being is different. So you're gonna need something a little bit more customized to you ideally. So figuring out what's gonna work better for your body type. A good rule of thumb though is you can't really go wrong with your heavy compound lifts. So that should be your first and foremost. Make sure you have the basics down first. You can gain size and strength with machines and isolation movements, but you're not gonna be well-rounded and you'll set yourself up for injuries down the road if you don't have the basics. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Go ahead and like the video. That helps more people see this content, so it'll help the channel out and it'll also help anybody else that needs this type of uh, this type of help with their with their fitness and mindset. So I really appreciate that. And hey, uh, comment below. Give me uh, let me know what you'd like to see or hear, and uh, I will do my best to get it out there for you. See you in the next video. This is my Amazon store I was mentioning earlier. I'm featuring the Mobot in this video. I have a lot of great fitness accessories, electronics and other useful tools featured in an easy to access design. So check it out, the link is in the description. The Mobot here, again, it's a combination foam roller and water bottle. It's stainless steel, so you won't be um, wasting plastic bottles or forgetting to bring your water to the gym. It's got a straw so you don't have to even take the lid off. And a lot of great colors and designs. So check it out, order it, um, and yeah, let me know what you think.